Finding a partner is tough at the best of times. How would I describe how I am around women? I don't know. Women don't hang around enough long enough for me to find out. <laughs> but if you're young, single and religious, it's a whole other ball game. No sex before marriage. Oh! <laughs> if you could meet your ideal Jewish person, what would it be? Full head of hair. Um... Excellent. There's definitely pressure to get married, especially when you're the last one to be married and going to your last best friend's wedding. Tonight, we're following three Muslim singletons on their journey to find the one. I mean, are you looking for an Angelina Jolie? No, uh, yeah, I'm never going to get one of them. They're going to run a mile when they see the beard. We'll find out what happens when you're looking for a wife when you've barely even spoken to a girl before. Islam demands you that you have to get married. And the older you are, the harder it gets. And when you have left it really late. I actually did think I would be married by now. I really did. At least once. <laughs> Should you still hold out for Mr. Perfect? I've got to rethink what my father would have wanted for me. And if an arranged marriage is on the cards? It's like blind date, I guess. Um, but your mum's still a black. <laughs> how can you be sure he's the right one? I wish I knew how I felt, but I don't. Like, I'm kind of... I think you're supposed to know, but I really don't. Zubair is a 23-year-old practicing Muslim who is studying engineering at Manchester Uni. My Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, advised the Muslims to keep the beard about the length that I've got, about five fingers, so when you cover it with a fist, it should fit in that. He may be serious about his religion, but he's not about himself. Hello. Very nice of you to let me into your country. <laughs> Living with Zubair, where comes to mind? Annoying, uh, hard, difficult, uh, but four most words. important of all, it's fun. He's, he's, he's a great guy, he's a great guy. A mate of mine once said, right, Zubair, it must be very hard for you to book one-way flights nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Zubair's just graduated and is planning to move to Pakistan in five months so he can put his degree to good use. Maybe I'm naive thinking this, but I do want to go back and at least try to help rebuild and give back to Pakistan. As a strict Muslim, it's his religious duty to now find a wife. He'd like to find someone in the UK, but he hasn't got long. I pray to Allah for a lot of things. One of the more immediate goals for me is to find me a match quick time. <laughs> and there's one other problem. He has no experience of women whatsoever. You won't be able to pull a girl even if she was pushing. No. <laughs> How would I describe how I am around women? I don't know. Women don't hang around enough long enough for me to find out. <laughs> Hi, where's Sam Zubair? How are you? I'm all right, sir. Yourself? Alhamdulillah. Have a seat. Thank, thank you very much. As a traditional Muslim, Zubair's never even been out with a girl. So if he's ever going to find a wife, he needs some help. OK, so you've had not a single girl you sat down with and you've spoken to and conversed with? No, I mean, um, actually, no, I've never sat down and spoke to a poor woman like that, no. Today, he's meeting Mizan, who runs a Muslim marriage agency. When you do arrange a meeting, OK, these are some uh, tips. OK. If you're going to check out the girl, if you're looking at her, don't gawk at her. Just say, yeah, mashallah, you're good looking, you know, meet our criteria. Beauty is important. Are you, I mean, I mean, sometimes people think religious people or those who are very conservative in their values and practice, beauty is not important. Is, how much of a factor no, is beauty? whether you like it, whether... People are silly to say that. Beauty has... I mean, are you looking for an Angelina Jolie in a scarf? No, yeah, I'm never <laughs> going to get one of them. They're going to run a mile when they see the beard. No, no, I couldn't score that high. Dress to impress. The man should look... He's serious. He should wear... You know, you don't have to wear a suit. Something smart, casual. OK? Smell good, dress up, look the part. And when you're in a meeting, be specific. Get to the point. Don't waffle in your talk. Don't lie. Um, just ask the basic questions. OK. Remember, men from Mars, women from Venus. There's a lot of truth in that. Yeah. Muslim or not Muslim, yeah. there's a lot of truth in that. And Muslim women are no different from any other women. Mm -hmm. OK, man. Okay. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. What he was giving me in terms of advice was, not just about how to present yourself, but also the actual formality of actually two people meeting each other. And plus, it was almost like he was giving me some sort of dating tips. It was almost like, when you go in there, be a gentleman, pay the bill, things like that. You know, it's 
systemically for us we can't really go down to the pub and we can't go to a club to meet meet people and even if we did they won't really be Muslim. In the Quran um, it actually specifically states that men and women aren't even to be in the same room that's how much there is that, that sort of difference. What Islam says is yes you meet people but don't go any further don't develop a physical relationship with them. I just got to that chick and said excuse me darling can I get your number and your father's number because I want to ask your father if I could talk to you about marriage. Mental is what they call mental. This ain't gonna be easy. 31 year old Tabasum or Dimpy is a doctor and lives at home with her family in Hertfordshire. Everyone calls me Dimpy at home, short for dimples. I used to have the dimples, but now they're like gone because of the fat. I have a very strong faith in Allah, yet um, I may not be a very strong practicing Muslim. I try to pray when I can. Dimpy has always wanted to marry a doctor. And over the past 10 years, she's turned down over 60 men who haven't measured up. Doctors in the Pakistani community are at the top of the food chain. So if I was to marry someone who was not a doctor, I don't think I would be comfortable with that. We've had numerous, multiple proposals over the years. So she'll take one look at him and you know, she'll dismiss it. Dimpy's dad wanted her to marry a doctor too. He died three years ago and now she's more determined than ever to find the right sort of man. I always look for a guy who my father would approve of, and that's very, very important for me. She, she's trying to follow a list of expectations that she has um, imbibed from her father, um, and obviously she's very attached to him, she loves him, and we all do. I miss him, I really miss him. Most Muslim girls get married young, so at the ripe old age of 31, Dimpy really needs to get her skates on. Even the nurses at work get worried about me settling down. They're all constantly on the lookout for someone. Today she's visiting her aunt Nabila. Since Dimpy's dad died, Nabila's been trying to find her a husband, but Dimpy's not making it easy. Somebody has all the qualities which you want. It's very difficult to find Dimpy. This person is not tall enough for me. He's not handsome <laughs> enough for me. He's not professionally, you know. These things come so low in marriage priorities, Dimpy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Getting married is a very serious matter. I know. It's I not... get palpitations. I when I think if when I see somebody and I just instantly know that this is not going to happen, I just I start getting not a panic attack, but I think, oh my god, this is for the rest of my life. I can't. I can't. I want to get out of there as soon as that, possible. That is exactly what I'm saying. Don't set standards that high, mm -hmm. which is difficult to find. So hard. It is you hard, but then you have to work for it. Nyla is a traditional Muslim accountancy student from London. Although she loves taking risks in her free time, when it comes to finding a husband, she wants to do everything strictly by the book and have an arranged marriage. Find everything else in life, and this sounds crazy, but why would you leave love to chance? You Muslim girls aren't for rent, you know, you've got to buy it. Nyla's the eldest girl in the family. Now she's 22, it's time to find her a husband. Arranged marriages, um, especially if your mum's arranging it, it's like, blind date, I guess, um, but your mum's still a black. <laughs> Although her mum's arranging her marriage, Nyla is allowed to say if she doesn't like someone. She's trusting me, so um, I have to fulfil my responsibility. She's like the first hurdle, so it means that if she feels that somebody is suitable, then I then kind of have the opportunity to make my own mind up. It's been a few weeks since Nyla's mum began the search for her husband. A family friend has given her the number of a possible match. If he's going to get a meeting with Nyla, he needs to impress her mum on the phone first. At this stage, it's literally just a stranger's number, so she would speak to them and get to know sort of what they're about, really. If, 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 we, if she feels that, you know, that's somebody that could kind of 
belong in this family. Ji, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Did you have a gut feeling? Yes. Or, yeah? My concern is he hasn't got the education. So for you, education is... Would you like to live uh, the person who is working in a um, cash and carry till? Mom, don't be horrible like that. That's fine it, for I, you. I'm not dissing anyone. Yeah, but um, you are dissing someone. <laughs> well, it's up to you if you want. You want to live your life, you know. You, are, you haven't got any experience of life that's why you are just laughing and making jokes on it mm -hmm. i'm your mother and i know your personality and if i say yes and you know things go further on uh, you would be the one who will turn around and you'll say mom you have done this to me <laughs> so yeah all right yeah. <laughs> yeah fair enough point taken mom's always know better huh? yes <laughs> I've got a proposal. The auntie has sent me the guy's CV. If Dimpy's ever going to find a husband her dad would have approved of, she needs to step up her search. Recently, she's seen a matchmaker. She's emailed Dimpy the profile of a possible husband, and he wants to meet her. You've well, got a CV as well. I've got a CV. That's a first. <laughs> is that the new wig? <laughs> so it's like a job application, so... It is. Hi, auntie. I think I deserve a CV. She may be a modern Muslim woman, but when it comes to finding someone, her brother and cousin still have to check them out first. They do the screening because they feel that they've got an answer to my father. And um, that's what scares them. <laughs> He's not referred. Every time there is a marriage proposal, they get all excited. They're like, this is the one. You're, you're getting married, you're old. <laughs> Dimpy's brother and cousin have already had to check out over 20 men since her dad died. He seems quite professional. He's educated. No, he's, he's only got a bachelor's. Yeah, but he's educated, he's got experience. Look how much yeah. he's got, like, 11 years of proven banking experience. Yeah. Is, there, oh. is there a picture? Yeah, there's a picture. Okay, don't laugh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, he's not particular. I'm not going to say he, he... I don't find... I wouldn't say he's good-looking, but he's, like... I'd still think... He... He... All right, I'll tell you something. Physical attraction has to be your thing, right? I don't give a... I don't really care what she's he got bad like. taste. This is very true. He's attractive in terms of his um, of his education and his experience. But not really. Yeah, okay. I prefer a doctor. You know that. You know. Yes, but you know, I was going to say beggars can't be choosers, but that's. Really <laughs> <good>. <laughs> I think we should give him a shot. I think we are giving him a shot yeah. already. I've said yes. I'm going to meet him anyway. Good. good stuff. I just thought I'd okay it by you guys. <laughs> Another thing that came up from one of the brothers was that uh, she should be a good wife, should be able to cook and clean. While her mum's on the case looking for her husband, Nyla's come to the local mosque for a workshop on what makes a successful Muslim relationship. Uh, so these are all answers from some of the brothers. Uh, someone with a beautiful face and someone that is good at fulfilling my needs and be fruity. And be fruity, what does that mean? Who said fruity? Does that, does that mean like being able to make a Good <laughs> fruit punch or something. <laughs> Being fruity, that's from the men. That didn't come up a lot, but it came up anyway. Or shows obedience and has no deficiencies. Wears good clothing and smells nice. These are the women of paradise you're asking for. <laughs> These are not, you're asking for a woman that doesn't exist on, the, on this earth. Women and men enter a mosque separately, and inside, they aren't allowed to share the same space. So Nyla is listening to the workshop through a curtain. The reason for the segregation is, is because it is commanded upon us not to mix freely. You don't even have to be religious to appreciate that you're in a place of worship and you don't necessarily want to be distracted by the opposite sex, for instance. It's an obligation for the man to provide for his wife, her needs. Because young traditional Muslims aren't allowed to date, they have no first-hand experience of how to behave in relationships. For example, She's used to shopping at Asda. And you want to shop at Lidl. And you say, well, OK, let's try Lidl. You go to Lidl, she's not, she's not content. She says, no, nah, it was all right, but it wasn't that good. It was all right. And the next week, she's like, let's go shopping. And you go, where are we going? She goes, Asda. You can't say no. She says, no, you're not going to Asda. We're going to Lidl. <laughs> Why? Because that's what she's used to before she married you. When you get married, you're going into partnership with your wife.
someone who is practicing down to earth, good sense of humour, and must be pleasing to the eye. Now, I think that's really politely put. Back at home, her best friend and sister are helping Nyla check out potential husbands suggested by the Imam at the mosque. You have to be good looking. You have to that's not what Islam teaches. I think the brother just wants people to know that if you are <laughs> if you fall off ugly. the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down, perhaps this is not the brother to contact. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's just leave it as that. Please describe your ideal match. Cut to the chase. Nyla needs to add her profile to the mosque database. Somebody who's open-minded, educated, and I'd say quite laid back. Would you agree? <laughs> Person who has a great sense. Humor and humble, somebody who's humble and down to earth. Yeah. Because arrogance and someone with a bit of a temper would be like my idea of an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Oh, and also just somebody who just keeps it real, um, mm -hmm. inshallah. I think it's his lifestyle and culture is very, very different to ours. It's been a few days since Dimpy was sent the details of the CV guy. She's become friends with him on Facebook, and she's found out a bit more than she was expecting. When I opened his Facebook, he's, he's with all these skimpy, dressed women out in bars and clubs. Fine, each of their own, um, but lots of drinking. I mean, he's having Bacardi shoved up his mouth while he's got a wine glass, and my brother was just like, this is not happening, because we're not that, like, liberal. It's not about being narrow-minded. It's just about uh, what's uh, what's acceptable within within the bounds of religion. Yeah. Right? And none of that, of that dude, of that dude, is accept acceptable by any means within the religion. You didn't even want me to meet him. No, I don't. There's no point. There's no point because it's up to you if that's what lifestyle you want. Actually, this is test for me because up till now I've always wanted someone very open-minded so that I could breathe. <laughs> now I'm actually thinking no. Um, this is not the type of lifestyle that I want to lead. So it's really disappointing. I speak to loads of girls who are my age and are not married at this point and they're all going through the same turmoil and I just feel, gosh, this is like never ending. I know everybody says, why don't you compromise and do this and do that, blah, blah, blah. But I can't, I won't be happy with myself. In this day, and especially in this country, it's difficult to find the um, right match. If somebody could draw a diagram for me that says, if you see a nice woman and you think she'd be worth talking to about marriage, do one, two, and three. I would do that in a heartbeat. It's becoming a big comedy show. Even the students at school joke around all the time. They're like, when are you going to find the wife, sir? Well, happy when it's meant to happen. And if that princess is watching this program, then princess, I'm very annoyed at you that you've been hiding for so long. But we can talk about that after. As part of his religious duty to find a wife, Zubair has signed up for a Muslim marriage event. It'll be the first one he's ever attended, and he has no idea what to expect. really don't want to go in the traditional jubba, the long Arabic cloak, because that makes me seem really, really formal. And please, no jokes. Uh, make sure you're serious. Please don't laugh around me. But hopefully with this, at least, they can know that, all right, even though he's got a beard, he's very Islamically inclined, he's a chilled out sort of guy. Fine. Somebody to love. This event is not just the next step, I think it's the first step for me. Um, because I've not been involved in the process particularly much at all. Traditional Muslims don't go speed dating, but they do go to organised events where they can mix with members of the opposite sex. The marriage event is taking place at a hotel in Manchester, and is mostly attended by professionals in their mid-twenties. It will be the first time Zubair has ever sat down with single Muslim women to talk about the subject of marriage. What's going through my mind at the moment? I wonder if she's there. <laughs> I wonder if she's been waiting 23 years of her life and there I come coming in. Not exactly in shining armor, but hey, I've got a pair of sketches and hopefully that'll be good enough for her. <laughs>
With 12 women to impress, Zubair wastes no time getting stuck in. I teach in a madrasa. So even though I started the comedy study in Man Uni, I teach kids as well. I gave them a test on Friday and I've got to mark them when I get home. People get to know each other in groups, and if anyone takes your fancy, you can then ask for a one-on-one -on -one chat. Fun and easy going when I need to be. I'm strict and hardcore when I need to be as well. This is me. I'd feel very, very uncomfortable if my wife was not wearing a hijab. Now, my only request uh, is that the girl be Pakistani simply because I want to move back to Pakistan and work there. Some people have put up profiles about themselves, explain a bit more about themselves if they didn't get to say it in the group meeting. And from that, I get to decide, do I think that this person is an interesting person? Do I think we're compatible? Or do I want to know more about her? And hopefully someone's doing the same for me. <laughs> I don't think so, but hey, <laughs> let's give it a shot. At the event, Zubair appears to be the most traditional male there. When you look at him and you think you see the whole beard and everything, you probably wouldn't think he was as as yeah, his personality and his sort of his looks don't really match. But yeah, when you actually chat to him, he's a really nice guy. Um, and yeah, he's like really open-minded and he's really chilled out. So yeah, it was it was refreshing to meet someone like that. Zubair may have made a good impression, but he hasn't had much luck. I would have been shocked if I got a one-to-one. -one. Most of the women here, they were much older than me. Well, not much older, three, four years older than me. 27, 28, 29. So they're already set in their lifestyle. They've already got a career going on, etc. So to ask them to change that just because of me and just to go to another country, the person that they've never met before. Finding the perfect match for her daughter is proving a tricky business. And Nyla's mum has called in extra help. Today, a Muslim matchmaker has come to visit. How old is Nyla now? Um, she's 22. 22, mashallah. How tall is she? She looks very tall to me. Yeah, she's 5'6". Five, 5'6", six. Five, six, mashallah. Oh, God. <laughs> How far has she got to finish her degree yet? Still, still two years. Two years, oh, OK. So it starts looking now. So. Yeah. yeah, it takes time, really, you know. Yes. Some people have been registered for me for three years, mm. but they're so fussy they couldn't find somebody yet. Mm. I suppose there's always a spark, you know, that you're going to love somebody. The matchmaker's daughter, Nigar, had an arranged marriage three years ago. But you there, know. there is a spark. A bit there definitely there. is a connection and, and a spark, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't get married in the first place, you know, yeah. to that yeah. person. She's doing finance and accountancy. Oh, so for traditional Muslims, even arranging a first meeting can take months. Would you think that Naila would like somebody to be on the same sort of uh, job side, like accountant? Accountant, would you prefer? If it is in the same field, then they do understand each, each other. other. You need to be um, very um, relaxed about it as well, yeah. obviously, not take it too hard if there is any sort of rejection from each side. Yeah, can you imagine? So if you see one person, you're like, nah. Next person, <laughs> nah. Third one, maybe not. Maybe. Fourth one, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. And then, nah, from the other side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Thank, Thank you so much, Thank you. It's always a pleasure to yes, see, see you. you as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just sort of getting used to it kind of thing. I mean, I've seen all my friends and, and, and family kind of going through it. So you think you know what it's about, but you really don't um, until it kind of knocks on your door and, and, and the process begins. Okay, I give my love to mum. And if you need anything, and we should get together. Then it we need to get together. Exercise with us. No new suitors have come through for Dimpy since the CV guy fell through, and she's still no closer to finding her ideal man. You don't know any Muslim doctors, right? You don't. Do you know any Muslim guys anyway? Single. No, it's Does Rick all... know anyone? I can ask. Good girl. Because you'd be a catch, right? Y you know it? Yeah. Why are you even asking? You know. Exactly, I mean like, I know you, but on paper you'd even be like a catch. Total. No? Yeah, absolutely. Just need to get the weight under control. I know it's not superficial, but for me... Yeah, but it's not about what they think. You'd want them to accept you however you are. It's how you feel personally, right? But, Jane, if you feel better... Their looks always count. That is the issue. You know it. You know when I'm thin, I always get more, like, people... But that's because you're exuding loads of confidence because you're happy with yourself, right? Very true. Look at me, psychoanalyze. Uh, yeah. See you soon. Thank you. Take care. Okay. You are insane. <laughs>
I never thought of it that way. I thought that I used to get more attention, and not that I don't get any more attention now from, from men, uh, was because when I'm thin, I'm hugely fit. <laughs> it's actually because I'm exuding a lot of confidence. Hmm, that's right, actually. I should have thought of that earlier. Gimpy's mum has recently been taken ill and has been in hospital for the past two weeks. So for the first time ever, Dimpy's having to run the family home. I, I, do, I don't know how to do things, <laughs> especially using a dishwasher. My mum was in hospital. She had to actually tell me how to, I had the mobile on at home. And there were so many dishes from uh, like my brother and I, what's this bus doing? So I didn't know what to do. My mum had to tell me off while I'm in hospital, while on the phone to me, like, what are you going to do when you get married? You don't know anything. Well, I'm sorry, it's just, you know, it's actually her fault. She's not taught me anything before. Can't help it. Everything is a mess on the tables when I come out in the morning. I have to put everything... So it's good practice for you. For what? For the future. For becoming a cleaner? No, it's just that it's good practice. You should know how to clean up. But she's getting a lot of practice these days with me and my friends and I entertain and then she gets a lot of practice serving. I hate it. What practice? I'm sorry, do you really think I'm just going to be serving? Is that all my life is going to be about? No, but now at least you know how to. So yeah, there's a lot to learn, but she's getting there, slowly. As the lead male in the family, Dimpy's brother's under increasing pressure to see her married. I made an extra conscious effort to try to, you know, push her to go to these uh, events. I get all these emails and, and forwards and stuff, like, you know, this and that, marriage events, Muslim marriage events and... I'm not going. And whatnot. Okay. reason why she's probably thinking, I don't want to go there, like, straight away you heard that. And then, and then me and my mum are like, why not? There's no harm in it. Because they're desperate people, though. There'd be my, lots and lots of no, freshies and, and desperate people that. from... I completely disagree because how can you say they're desperate? At the end of the day, everyone, uh, if, 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 you're, if you're actively looking for a life partner, which she is, right, okay? We're not really act You're making me, Forget forcing about, okay, me to do we're, that. We're not forcing you at all. I mean, at the end of the day, otherwise you wouldn't be here, whatever, 30, 32, 31, whatever. But the point is that you have to be more open to these, to these other events. And, um, and she's not, at these events, you're more likely to find someone. And that's why these events uh, are so popular. No, but seriously, if it's somewhere like in East London or something, I'm not going to go. Um, but if it was at some, like, good hotel or whatever. Why? Because what then I'm not going to meet the right type of person, I just know it. Joubert's just leaving another marriage event. He's had no luck here or anywhere else, and it's just two months before he leaves for Pakistan. It was a lot bigger venue than the first venue I went to, and still not a woman was interested, which sort of tells me that I'm doing something wrong. They say that the world was built for two, only worth living if somebody... Zubair suspects he's standing out at the events for the wrong reasons. I know I'm always judged wherever I go. How? Just because I've got this thing on my face. <laughs> I've got a beard. Immediately, people start having assumptions. He's a bearded guy. Okay, he's a strict Muslim. He doesn't have any fun at all in life. He, you know, he doesn't go out much. He doesn't uh, socialize much, you know. It's you, it's you, it's all for you. So, it's very upsetting, you know, that people don't even know you and they think they do. <laughs> Heaven is a place on earth with you. I didn't get any closer to my goal at this particular event, but that's not going to stop me. I got to keep trying. Once got to keep trying, you can never give up. Only with living if somebody is loving you. Hi, I'm my friend. Hi, After several months of actively searching, Nyla's mum has finally found a man she wants Nyla to meet. It's big news for her two best friends. Yeah. Do you know, like, yeah. I'm 27, and um, he's, he's done like an IT degree. So far, I mean, what he, I don't know what he looks like just yet. 
Um, no. You I will see, see him. It's not like he's just going to turn up on the wedding day. I'll see him next weekend. You get a chance to actually listen to what he's like and give it a chance rather than just look at his phone and go... Yeah. <laughs> Nearly half of all Muslims in the UK originally come from Pakistan. Bringing his parents. And Naila's introduction is a British Pakistani from London. So long as you don't feel under any sort of pressure to but you push know, yourself you know, to like them, and not for yourself, but because for your family. No pressure, and either. both parties know that when they come in, because obviously you're getting to know the person for the first time. It's exciting. I find so, it's really exciting for you, Nyla. Know, <laughs> obviously, I'm, I'm a little bit anxious to see who who is it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like it's blind date. It's actually quite exciting. Yeah. But um, it is exciting. But we'll we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Today is Dimpy's 32nd birthday. Oh, Dr. Dimpy, that's so lovely. Oh, wow. Dimpy's been waiting for her perfect husband to come along for 10 years now. To tell you the truth, um, I just feel quite old today, actually. I feel, gosh, 32 is huge. I actually did think I would be married by now. I really did. At least once. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> Most Muslims get married before they're 25. 30 onwards is risky business. If there's an unmarried woman and she's, I don't know, late 30s, they're going to start asking questions. My clientele of women who are in their 30s or 40s, I just can't find a spouse for them. Um, obviously, Asian timing, people are late. But hopefully, it'll be a good turnout. You've got one, two, three, five already. <laughs> More time. More. To try and find the right kind of man before it really is too late, Dimpy is taking matters into her own hands. This is funny. <laughs> she's the social secretary of the British Asian Medical Association, so she's organised an event where doctors should be guaranteed. You are? Regarding coming to uh, San Jada. Hi, Hello, thank, thank you, you so much for coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a professional network, so everyone can meet up in the professional setting, and if they like each other, why not get together? So it'll be quite cool. <laughs> We're filling up really quite fast, but they're all females, and I need some more men. I've invited a lot of men. This can't be just a female-only event. This is just too wrong. We need to speak to each other, but we've not like. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Dimpy's friends would love the right man to be here for Dimpy tonight, as even they are running out of options for her. I'm trying hard to find her someone. I haven't done too well so far. Please come through. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I haven't found the perfect person for her yet, but I'm still looking, although at the moment I do feel like people I've thought of so far aren't good enough for her. Yeah, yeah but less, yeah. less men. Yeah, less men. Why are all men? What about you? Yeah. They're all girls. They're like only three men here. Like, <laughs> this is just like, I don't understand what's going on. Please welcome, definitely. Please come through. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, there were 30 people expected, but there's half right now, but it looks full. Um, thank you all very much for coming. Um, enjoy your meals. And um, yeah, I look forward to many more evenings with lots more people. So get the word out, please, and thank you. There were only about four guys that came to the whole event. Uh, total turnout was about 25 people. So I'm just so unlucky in love. Like, there's no one here. <laughs> I think I'm just so unlucky. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, it is. Brother Marmoon, it's Naida. When people go on their first date kind of thing, everybody has this kind of nervous panic. And it's because 
especially if it's a blind date, right? With her introduction only days away, Nyla's contacted a Muslim counsellor called Marmoon. He runs a course called Marry Mr. Right and gives advice over the phone to young Muslims preparing for marriage. And I just, I feel like I am constantly trying to make everything okay for everyone and I think that comes from, from being the elder sister, obviously. But then... Nyla doesn't have to say yes to anyone she's not totally sure about, but it might not be easy to say no. I think it's, it's just, it's the pressure of, of going into the meeting and perhaps feeling like you won't like that person, you will then find yourself in a situation where you're going to have to pluck up the courage to say no. Um, and it's kind of just, I think, it's, it, it's, it's dealing with that. First of all, it's going to end up happening is you're going to tell your mum, no, I don't like him. Your mum's going to tell his mum. There's three people of removal between you having to have that conversation with him. <laughs> right? Yeah. You have literally nothing to worry about. <laughs> My mum's sitting here going, yeah, that's it, put everything on mum's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, it's not all on your shoulders. That's the whole point of having a, yeah. you know, your families arranging the, the marriage together. Yeah. Okay. Um, May Allah make it really easy for you and get you married to the ideal person for you. Inshallah. As soon as you're ready. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. The reality of having to meet a potential husband face to face is beginning to sink in. It highlighted to me that I'm in a much better position than, than anybody that's actually going out there meeting somebody sort of one to one because I don't have the pressures of, of what do I do if he's an ogre. When you get the answer from inside you, then it is more effective rather than anybody else is telling you. It's a bit silly to think that you won't have to reject somebody, you know, at some point you will have to do that. There's nothing wrong with preferring, um, you know, doctors, that's fine if you have your preference, but it should still mean that you are open to meeting people from other vocations, from other backgrounds. Today, and Dimpy's talking to her cousin and aunt about her search for a man but they're running out of patience. If you're not keen on working after you get married, what difference does it make whether he was a doctor or not? I don't know, I've got this... So what, you're not keen on working after you get married? Yeah, you he know, always says that, I don't get I don't married want to, I won't uh, work after I get married. I, I won't work. So then why are you so, so obsessed why with marrying a yes. doctor? Because then he can do what I was potentially meant so to do. So why are you buying an investment banker or something? They'll still <laughs> no, be... Are there any investment bankers around? No, but you can So we're work. now dropping this entire principle that we've held on for 10 years to find a doctor. No, I'd pr like, I'd prefer a doctor. Because my papa said to go prefer a doctor. What I was trying to say was that I think you should broaden your search to go beyond just one profession. Otherwise, this could go on forever. I'm not going <laughs> Lost your soul by day now. <laughs> no, no. And whatever we I can get for you, you on eBay, Amazon will take. Oh, no. <laughs> you know that's not gonna happen. Gumtree. <laughs> Papa was very picky as well, was he not? You have set your uh, goals according to your father. I want you to move on in life. I want you to realize that Papa has gone, and you want to have somebody who is considerate, educated who can support you, who is uh, understanding and loving, and that's it. But you don't see that... Papa won't be happy with Papa it. will be happy. The Once you are settled Papa and you are... Happy Papa will be happy if you are happy. Yeah, you're right. No, you are right. Because if you agree, then you have to... No, but that's the thing now, Auntie. That's, it's, it's, it's going to take me time, really. It's a mindset that I've grown up with, that this is what Papa said, bang, 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 and this is what I'm going to follow. But you cannot live in your I know, papa's I know, shadow baby anymore. You have to move on. Because fathers and parents are never there forever. They have to go and then you have to move on. We'll do that, inshallah. It's very hard, but I can try. Try, think. Well, this criteria that I have is just all just a sham, isn't it, really? It's not really what you need to look for for a husband. I guess I'm a bit scared to allow myself to like someone. I'm just really scared that my father won't be happy with it. I've got to rethink what my father would have wanted for me.
like since my dad's gone, I just feel I really miss him now. Now that I've spoken to my aunt, I just really miss him. I feel like visiting him now. I just feel I need to see him. They just left the house. Oh. After three months of endless phone calls, today is Nyla's first official introduction since her mum started looking. The guy she's meeting is five years older than her, and he works in IT. Obviously, she's nervous. Yeah, she's nervous. But obviously, she has to go through. There is no other way. What does she have to do? <laughs> do I have to tell you everything? Yeah, I know, I heard something. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I really don't know how I'm feeling. I'm kind of excited to see what they're all about, but at the same time, I just feel a bit sort of... I feel like there's a need to be very realistic um, and go into it. I don't want to be sort of all dreamy and feel like, you know, the prince is calm. It's not like that at all. All his family are coming over for lunch and they're preparing kebabs and biryani. I think people will have their Sunday shoes on just because you don't want to offend anybody. But um, at the same time, mum refuses to kind of go all out um, just because it's not, it's kind of putting on a show. I just be normal, you know, who I am. I'm not going to pretend. Traditional introductions between Muslim families at home are very private, so the meeting takes place behind closed doors. What was your overall view of it? Three hours later, the meeting is over, and Nyla must decide if she wants to take things to the next stage. He was alive. He was all right. He had a bid. It's like chin chin. Um, and yeah. Well, I'd say he's worthy of my sister. He's good enough for me. Oh, so sister. it just took one meeting for you to just no, say. Because, no, because. No, but you can pick up. Yeah, obviously, there's more meetings, but right now, he's got an okay. You know, he didn't speak very much, but you could see that he certainly had like some wit. Um, and. Well, I don't know what he thought, obviously, of me. I think I was very quiet. So at least somebody thinks I'm quiet. Oh. Obviously, after you have more meetings and stuff, I think they'll gather. <laughs> Not in a bad way, <laughs> but they'll, they'll gather, like, you know, what you're... Not really like, but what your personality is and what kind of person you are. It would be lovely, and I, I would happily sort of get to know them as, as family friends, but it's kind of now figuring out whether I, f I find myself fitting into that family. We will have some more meetings and then maybe we can say yes or no, but not at this point. I wish I knew how I felt, but I don't. Like, I'm kind of, I think you're supposed to know, but I really don't. <laughs> we'll um, have to wait and see. It's only two weeks until Zubair moves to Pakistan. But finally, after months of searching for a wife, he's had some good news. A girl from the marriage service has requested a meeting. This is the moment Zubair's been praying for. This is 
the first time I've spoken face to face with uh, a woman about uh, marriage and it's peculiar. It is very peculiar indeed for me because I've never done it before. Butterflies in the stomach, is that what they call it? <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to make it out of here. Exactly.